For my fans, I decided to get on this channel and to talk about um, other things. I was shocked that someone told a store not to sell DMSO to me for the use to neutralize prions for mad cow disease. Someone actually went into the store and told them not to sell it to me. I don't know who, but I think that was discrimination. Uh, they're upset because I was using it internally, but it's not against the law to use it internally because it can be prescribed by a doctor. DMSO can be prescribed by a doctor for cystitis. So now Ron Segan Supply is like, isn't going to sell it to me. So I'm bummed out. What else could I do? There's a couple things I was thinking. Since it's kind of like a scurvy disease, I could use pycnogenol from pine bark. It's an antioxidant, 50 times more powerful than vitamin C, and 20 times more powerful than vitamin E. And uh, pycnogenol from the pine bark is the best form, and it can help prevent and cure scurvy. But I don't know if it's any good for mad cow disease. You can also get a cheaper version of it from grape seeds uh, called grape seed um, pycnogenol. Uh, or grapeseed extract. But my best bet is to go and use a product called Supple, which is an infomercial. Or better still, one of the ingredients in Supple is called MSM. MSM is needed for our bodies, and some say that DMSO is converted into MSM, and you can t they're just crystals. It's like you can take the crystals in a tablet, pr compressed tablet form, or you can mix the crystals in water. And MSM is in supple, which is used against arthritis and other things. Our hair, skin, and nails requires the substance like that. And so for those of you who are also having problems getting, who might have mad cow disease, because I, I talked to one person who had a friend, excuse me, a friend in the United States who had mad cow disease and a who got it from a friend. So this isn't something that just uh, only happens in England. And I apologize when I overestimated the number of people who had died from mad cow disease. It's not thousands of people in the United Kingdom who have died from mad cow disease. It's only a, a couple hundred or a hundred or so, uh, much less than I had stated. But there might be others that we don't know who, who have the disease, but it, some of the doctors think it's just Parkinson's or whatnot organophosphate pesticides, too much manganese or copper. One of the products at can cause the mad cow disease, according to uh, um, um, an, the article that was on YouTube uh, uh, that's about mad cow disease, which I got my source from. I just typed in DMSO use on mad cow disease. And then I got the articles, two different articles have this information that is caused by organophosphate pesticides or lice medications or flea and tick powders. It's like you don't want to put lice medications on your child if they contain organophosphate pesticides or something dissimilar or similar because that can set them up later on life with a mad cow disease. Um, so I'm just going to get off but let's not underestimate what um, MSM is uh, the good it could do for people with mad cow disease or Parkinson's or Alzheimer's that might really be mad cow disease in disguise. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. I just wanted to make uh, an add on note saying one of the problems with using M uh, DMSO, excuse me, one of the problems of using DMSO is that eventually it, it goes through your pores and people can smell it, it's the impurities that they're smelling. It's like because of its manufacturing, some impurities can leave a sulfur kind of smell, like onions or garlic. Because the smell can get strong, it might be a reason not to use it. But using MSM doesn't give that uh, odor as, as mu nearly as much as using DMSO. There are two sources of DMSO. It can be manufactured petrochemically like uh, a petrochemical product, like Vaseline is a petrochemical product. Uh, or the more pure form is from trees. It's in the wood pulp manufacturing process, they can collect the DMSO. Now, I don't know how, where they get MSM, but like I say, MSM might convert in our bodies when we drink water that has DMSO in it, or for, like from rainwater sources. It's like, and then it's converted in our bodies to MSM to help hair, skin, and nails. 
the best form of it is probably the pine, uh, excuse me, is probably the wood pulp form because it's more natural, but um, it's just a, sl a slight chemical difference. Uh, it's like manufacturing it from petrochemical or getting your source of it from a more natural source from trees. Um, in fact, the petrochemical form might be just as w do just as well in staving off symptoms such as cystitis is what it's used to prescribe for. And now it's being researched, uh, DMSO is being researched to see if it's good against spinal cord injuries or traumatic injuries to the head, to the brain or to the head. Um, so, like, if you don't want people or your landlord telling you you stink or it's like you can't use this DMSO because it smells really bad, then you'll have to switch and start using MSM or the product supple, which is an infomercial, which contains glucosamine sulfate and chondritin sulfate used for, uh, for nutritional support for arthritis. And uh, you can just buy MSM and a health, any health food store will carry it. it. It doesn't suggest how much you should take on the label, but if you took one a day, I mean, that's how the, they're big crystal line pills. And, uh, and then I would try pycnogenol and a multivitamin mineral. It might help. Uh, neutralize the prion and uh, help people with mad cow disease uh, live a better quality of life if they took all three of those things. A vitamin supplement, pycnogenol from pine bark or grapeseed. If you, if, grapeseed is cheaper so if you can't afford it from the pine bark. And then using MSM, those are the three things you could try instead of using DMSO. But it's just not the same. It's like, I don't think using MSM does as good a job as using DMSO, but it might be safer over the long run. Thank you very much for listening.